Hello viewers. In this video I am going to show you how to use platform to create an entire web page. The idea is to create a web page for a wedding or wedding planner consisting of about six sections. I've already prepared the RapidWeaver project and I've already dropped in the platform settings stack. We're starting with dropping in a hero, making this large and instead of putting in an image stack we are going to use the image backdrop feature. Uh, let's go over to the resources and pull over this picture of a bride. Let's turn the image tiling off and set the image size to fill the whole hero stack. Now we are going to use a color overlay. So we're going to choose black here and uh, move opacity to a value which we like, like for example 30%. Alright, this has already the right contrast for us. Uh, now we want to put on some title and text. I'm going to use a one column stack as a container. You will see in a minute why I'm doing that. And now we'll drop in the title and a content stack. The colors, uh, the text color is not uh, what we need. We need something more contrasty, so we'll set the title color to white. And the same with the content, where we choose text color and set this to white as well. Now, if we look in the preview, we see that uh, the text goes right across the hero, we don't want this, I want it here in this uh, right hand section. This is why I'm using the one column stack. I am reducing the size to 4 and giving it an offset of 7, which brings it exactly where I want it. Okay, now with this done, we will put in a three column stack as divider to the next following sections and um, I want to display three pictures in a row. We could again drop in an image stack into each of these uh, drop areas. However, I'm going to use the section stack in each of these. Because if we use the image backdrop like with a hero, we can put some more um, stacks on top of the image basically. So let's go ahead and uh, pull over a few images from the resources. And while this is loading, we're playing a little bit of music. All right, first we start with flowers, next we're going to put in some jewelry and lastly there will be cake. Just like before, with the hero stack, we're turning off the tiling and set it to fill, which is actually pretty cool because we don't have to care about the size of the image itself. The platform, respectively the three column stack, is taking care of all the sizing for us.
Okay, let's have a look what's potting now. We have our main image on the hero and below we have a slither of images separated by gaps. So this is maybe not quite what we wanted, but it's very easily easy to, to uh, change. With the columns we want to get rid of the gaps and the slithers we can get under control by setting the section size to medium for each of them. And voila, there we are. Looks quite good. Now, next we want to put some kind of title across these images using the title stack, of course. And again, we have a little bit an issue with um, the contrast. Dark on dark doesn't really work properly. Let's first ch change this to the word header. Have this centered and change the title color to white. Let's see what is, how it works. Mm, still, even here we have now a competition between the white here and the light colors in the flowers. What I'm going to do here now for all the sections is like with the hero, I'm going to put in an overlay. And set this to 30% again. I'm going through this very quickly now because I've explained it before. So 30%. Capacity and with the cake we do the same. Okay. The header we just simply copy and paste. Now let's have a look what our result looks like. Pretty much the way I wanted it. Okay, one more thing I would like to do is I would like to have a line separating the main picture from the other three below. For that we go back to the hero stack and we're going to use the standard layout options and no border options sorry and put in a bottom border of 10 pixels and change the color to something which comes out of our color scheme this is why i'm using this eyedropper tool and i'm going over here on the, the skin here of, of the arm and while this is a bit dark we can go to this kind of color selector and bring it up in its lightness until this is something we like. Okay, let's stay just like this here. Okay, basically this is done. Let's quickly control it in the preview. There it is. Okay, the next section will be more uh, text and I will put this into two column stacks which I will now fill with again a title and another title and respectively content there we go and if you look into the preview we can see that this is maybe not quite in the style which we had in mind. I would like to have more space to the left and to the right and have the whole uh, text situation more centered and a little bit more offset from the three pictures above. So what I'm going to do now first is in the column stack put in a margin using the standard layout from the top like 40 and now 
with the columns themselves, we said we, we want it a little bit separated from the from the borders. I am going to reduce the column size to four each, and I'm going to offset the first column by two. The result looks like this. We have two columns offset from the left and to the right, and they are smaller, so the lines are shorter and easier to read. I am going to copy this now to have another set of these columns below. However, with the copied version, I am going to remove the margin. The top margin. All right. Okay, let's give these headers a little bit more substance by maybe saying here venue. What do we have here? Of course, the venue have you eat the cake, then you drive away. So this is the term car. And where do you drive? Onto your honeymoon, of course. Okay, there we go. Now you could actually go on and further decorate these columns. For example, you could give the titles a different color. Maybe in, in our color scheme you can um, put in maybe an icon at, on the top of it and so on and so on. But uh, maybe we leave it the way it is right now. Maybe we turn back to change it or yeah, if you like it, maybe later. Okay, the next section will be some uh, kind of poetry. I'm not the biggest poet, so I'm just going to put in a placeholder. Um, I'm going to use a one column stack. And inside the one column stack, we are going to use a title, which shouldn't be too ginormous because there will be a whole sentence and it's going to contain secondary text and we are going to center the whole thing so this is where we put some meaningful poetry And it's got an author, of course, who we want to credit. And all right, maybe we make both the main text and the subtitle uh, or subtext uh, into italic. It's going to look cool. All right, there we go. And. Um, now we give it a proper backdrop. We're going to use something out of our uh, known color scheme by using the color feature in the one column stack. Custom, uh, certainly not blue. We take some kind of skin. Now let's have a look and preview what we have created here. Uh, this is already quite a nice separator. Okay, now we can turn to the next section. Two columns stack again. Here we're going to put uh, on the one hand side, on the left hand side, we're going to put an image. On the other side, we're going to put a text. And we're going to offset this section from the rest by giving it a kind of a gray backdrop. Okay, let's first put in an image stack, like this. Use the appropriate image from our resources. Taking this one here straight away. Close that. go back to our two column stack and we know already that we don't like any gaps 
Thanks always for being capless. Um, now we want a grey backdrop on the left on the right hand side color custom not blue we want gray and um, since we want to offset the text entirely from uh, the rest we are going to use a one column stack inside the two column stack put in the title and the content inside the one column stack please all right so now let's see what we have it's almost there not quite yet what we want to get rid of here on the image side is bottom margin let's see what this what this has done now it's, it fills the whole um, the entire side of the of the column now we want to actually offset this text and this is why we are using the one column stack inside this column again to actually be able to give this a distance from the top by putting in a top margin of uh, let's say 40 pixels okay and we want to offset it from the left that's why we are going to set the size to 11 and the offset to 1 and this is what it's going to look like in real life already very much where we want it to be now for the next section we are going to use a one column stack again we are going to put in an image stack and let's right away populate this with an image feet okay below that we are going to have a title and text again okay so what do we have let's have a look in preview Maybe not exactly what we want. We want an offset from the top, and we want the whole thing to get ba basically in line with our layout, which we have used before. So, what are we going to do? We're going to format this one column stack, give it a margin from the top, like 40 pixels again, for example. And now let's resize this thing to six and offset the whole thing by three. And it's in the middle again. Let's check it. Okay, now we can actually go ahead and center the text. example here we could write about us and below this we can for example put a button which we are also going to center with the text contact us For example for some kind of RSVP and with a link we are can for example go ahead and say mail to um, 
me at examplecom.com Awesome. So the last section will be some kind of footer, which we will divide using, of course, the divider. Let's get the one column stack again. It was helpful before. Customize it right away to be like six wide and offset by three. Drop in content. And here we are going to write copyright something. Use this convenient thing here. Um, my name 2019. And now we can actually maybe center the whole thing. And above it, we can put in a three column stack. And um, the idea is to put in icons here, for example, for email, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. I'm going to align all three columns centered so that it looks decent. And I'm going to show you now how to use these icons. Um, if you drop in an icon stack, you get immediately by default the Font Awesome stack, but you can choose between Font Awesome, Ionicons, Material Design, and Open Iconic, depending on what you like and what uh, icon set you require. In this case, we stay with, um, with Font Awesome. And uh, I know, for example, that uh, that Facebook is FAB, FA hyphen Facebook. And there you have your Facebook icon already. Maybe it's a bit small, maybe you like it, I don't know. Uh, you can change the size like this. Um, yeah, this, is, this looks quite good. Then you can give it a different color, for example, uh, a gray, or you can stick with, uh, with the, the standard Facebook color like this. Um, depends on your, on your, on your kind of uh, uh, taste. Then we can, for example, do the same with here, with, um, uh, with Twitter. F A B F A Twitter There comes a little birdie and same size of course and yeah well I don't know whether we have an appropriate color for the Twitter bird but let's choose lighter blue almost looks like it and lastly another icon I have no idea what we can use here now, maybe email or whatever. I'll just leave it with the standard. Put the icon size two, two times like we did before. And there we go. Let's have a look what we got. Looks quite usable. So in the beginning, I promised to show how to uh, use the font stack to actually customize this, the font of this headline. We're going to do that right now. And um, we are, for that, we are going to use the font stack. And from the font stack, we, to do so anything, we have to select a sub stack. In this case, we're going to use Google Fonts. I need a little bit more space. I'm closing the library for now. Um, let me quickly explain how the sub stacks of font are working. On the left hand side, we see the, dis the contents of description. I'm going to call this title because we want to target the title of this page. Then here on the right, we see the font name. And for Google Fonts, you always have to select the, or type in the name exactly the way they provide it with all capitalizations and uh, blanks. Um, I want to use a font called Playball. I hope I get that right. 
and by default we are not displaying the font in edit mode let me just quickly check this yes I'm, I was correct this is exactly what I wanted why do we not uh, by default uh, show the font in edit mode because it can get choppy and this is certainly nothing we want to have all the time so you can select to have it on all the time or you can switch it off next important is the uh, fallback font so that you can actually see that you are using something um, something out of the ordinary I set this to cursive now and just to have a replacement font. Um, here these parameters you select exactly as the Google font is, is provided on the, on the web page. You can select uh, italic and bold italic additionally and if you do not see the font actually pulling through you might have to use this uh, uh, force button. Uh, lastly uh, we have the scope for the font setting this, that means what kind of thing do you want to target uh, I'm not exp going to explain all the all the settings now because they can be a little bit elaborate um, for now it's enough to know that we have uh, something like font sets and I'm going to assign this particular font now to font set 1 over to the title I have at the bottom an area called extra and again here we see a corresponding font set drop down and I'm going to select font set 1. For now we have that replacement font just being displayed but as soon as I say display font in edit mode you see that we are using the original playball font from Google here. Okay. So maybe this is good, but you don't like the size, it's too small, which I think is the case. We use the style set, uh, the style stack now, which automatically drops in a, a style set for us. I need more space. It works almost similar to the, to the font stack. On the left hand side, we have the description. Also here, we say title because we want to target the title. Currently nothing is set. We want to override the size. Let's say we want it for, this is for small devices, medium devices, large devices and big screens. Like for, this is for phones, tablets, medium sized screens like uh, Apple uh, laptops, smaller laptops. And this is for, the, for, for example, for a, for a, a full HD screen say two, three, four, uh, four, okay. So the same applies here. We have to, we have sets, but which we are called now style sets. We have eight style sets to select, select from. We are assigning this to style set one. Over to the title. We also assign it to style set one. And as you can see, nothing is happening although we have assigned it and in order to get around this we go back to the style stack and we enable the force button and as you could see it immediately takes now we have a decent font size a decent uh, different font and actually it looks pretty cool this is what it looks like in the preview mode and scrolling down we can see what we did. We created an entire website using platform within a few minutes and a few mouse clicks from scratch. This concludes the introductory video. Thanks for watching and bye bye.